Welcome to Paranormal Yakko. You are invited to join me, your host, Stan Mallow, each week when I interview a different guest of note in their respective field. The unexplained, the mysterious, the macabre, UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena. We explore them all on Paranormal Yakker. Hi everyone, I'm Stan Mallow, the Paranormal Yakker. My guest in today's show is prolific documentary filmmaker Darcy Weir. I'll be speaking with him about his documentary, Secret Space UFOs, Apollo 1 to 11, The Truth About Our Early Apollo Missions. Darcy Weir, welcome to Paranormal Yacker. Stan, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Totally mutual. You, Darcy, have many successful documentaries to your credit, having seen and enjoyed it immensely. Secret Space UFOs Apollo 1 to 11 is definitely one of them. What was there about the Apollo missions and their connection to the UFO phenomena that originally got your interest and led you to document it? This documentary is in a series of documentaries that I've been working on regarding Regarding space-related anomalies and UFOs, space-based, I started my investigations into the very first NASA space missions, which happened post-1958 with the X-15 mission. This was a rocket-powered jet that was connected to a B-2, modified B-2 bomber and shot an astronaut into orbit. Even as early as those first astronaut-designated missions, there were UFO reports from the pilots. And this made its way into Life magazine in the early 60s. I believe it was 1961. Robert White and Joseph Walker were the two pilots that reported UFO encounters during those X-15 missions. Then we go to the Mercury missions and the Gemini space program missions. These were considered the bridge to the moon. That's what they nicknamed those missions because all they were doing was trying to familiarize themselves with being in space the astronauts learning how to ride a capsule into orbit and then come back down to Earth. And they would go out into cislunar orbit as far as they could and then come back. All of these missions were very important. And in my documentaries, I try to document the technical sort of scientific achievements that are going on, as well as the anomalies that happened during these missions. And Apollo was the next set of missions that we would use our astronauts in space with eventually land on the moon. With Apollo 1 to 11, the reason why I focused on one is because, first of all, poor astronauts died, Gus Grissom being one of the notable astronauts from the previous Gemini missions that was ported over to Apollo. All of this sort of strange things NASA had reported, for example, they said to the press that they died from asphyxiation. We know this to be untrue, especially if you watch this film, you hear the astronauts scream while well, Gus Grissom screaming for his life, being burned alive. So just little details like that shows that NASA, even way back when, had a PR campaign to limit the truths that they released to the public. One of those things that they filtered and kept from the public were space anomalies like UFOs that astronauts were reporting or taking pictures of or taking DAC motion picture of. And the other are lunar anomalies, structures and strange things that they were hearing, music from the far side of the moon, these types of things. I think just from investigating earlier space missions, it just seemed right to cover Apollo and the strange things that were going on in, in those missions leading up to landing on the moon. Do you, Darcy, recall when you first became interested in the UFO phenomena and what triggered that interest? You know, I first became interested in the UFO phenomenon when I was about 19 years old. I'm 38 now. The catalyst for that was actually studying in university. I read this book called Life in the Universe that was actually authored by Seth Shostak and another individual. I can't uh, really remember. It was a astrobiology 101 class, like just an intro. That piqued my interest because the questions in those book laid out the foundation for science 
that there has to be life in the universe. There has to be life in our galaxy alone based on the Drake equation. And so I started hearing about tales that possibly the government had covered up interactions that our planet had had with possible alien visitors. I think I saw my first few documentaries and then I just went right down the rabbit hole and thought, I want to like look into this further and see if I can document some different things about this whole phenomenon. There's so much out there to the phenomenon, to documents. I've been busy. Secret Space UFOs, Apollo 1 to 11, explores the hundreds of UFO phenomenon sightings that occurred during those missions. And it features a broad spectrum of outstanding personalities and pioneers in the UFO and space age worlds. Could you, Darcy, tell me who some of them are? Well, there's Richard Dolan in this documentary who's a historian. He's actually a classically trained historian, has a, a master's in history and turned historian skills towards documenting military industrial complex involvement with studying UFOs and other global events that had happened throughout the years. He has many books, UFOs and the National Security Act. He's got many volumes covering different ranges of years through history that you UFOs have been involved in Earth history, the military being a part of that. Then I have Jim Goodall in, in another documentary, who's also featured in Secret Space UFOs, Fast Walkers. That's the image behind me. If your viewers or listeners want to go check that out, that's out, out now as well, brand new. I have in Apollo 11 also Mike Barra, who worked with Richard C. Hoagland on investigating imagery that had come back from the Apollo missions. They really scrutinized those images in their book, Dark Mission. Mike is an invaluable resource for this type of stuff because he's got some original archival images that you can't even really find online anymore. NASA kind of scrubs their databases and updates their imagery quite often, especially with the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, where many of the photos came from. And myself, I'm in the documentary as well, starting to get in front of the camera and instead of behind it. I've spoken to many different folks in this series over the years, Stanton Friedman, Travis Walton, and all kinds of characters who are involved in this study of ufology. It's clear in the documentary that some Apollo astronauts were not honest about the unexplained phenomenon they witnessed in their moon missions. The best example would be the segment you have of a Larry King show on UFOs in which Buzz Aldrin was a guest. You say he lied. Why would he do that on national TV? I did miss when I was mentioning the cast of characters in this documentary. Definitely James Fox is in there. James Fox is a prolific director, writer, producer that's been documenting the history of UFOs throughout the years. I got a chance to sit down with him and talk about his encounter with Buzz Aldrin. So Buzz Aldrin and James got connected through Buzz Buzz's family member, as well as one of Buzz's best friends, an actor in Hollywood. James used to work in Hollywood as like production assistant, which is gopher, sometimes a camera assistant, that types of stuff on sets. So he got close to some Hollywood types when he told them he was working on a UFO documentary. One of these Hollywood actors said, well, you got to talk to Buzz Aldrin, my friend. He had some experiences on the way to the moon. That's always been part of the lore, but but the interview I feature really shows that if you look at the chronology of how Buzz would talk about his encounter in space with something anomalous, his story would change over time. When he was invited to speak on Larry King Live, he was mostly invited to be a debunker to UFOs, to squash the idea that he ever saw anything anomalous. And James Fox was on that panel. Prior to that panel, he had gone to meet with Buzz to interview him about his encounter and was promised prior to that that he would get this interview officially, but Buzz got cold feet and canceled. So it really hurt James Fox in a way. It messed with his ability to represent this story in the best way. And I thought, well, I'm making this documentary about the astronauts, what they saw, the anomalies. It would make sense to get this testimony from James Fox on how he kind of got ghosted by Buzz 
Aldrin and also embarrassed James Fox and Fife Symington, Stanton Friedman, and the other panel guests that were pro UFO on Larry King Live. He equated them to being like magicians, creating up illusions. Prior to that, he was open to talking about his UFO experience. So family members of Buzz at the time supposed that somebody had gotten to him. Somebody had told him to shut up and not talk about it because it would legitimize the UFO topic in the public. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon, was quite vocal about his belief in UFOs and alien beings and talked uh, freely about what he saw and experienced on his Apollo moon mission. How come the powers that be were not able to stifle him as they did other astronauts? If you look at what Edgar Mitchell actually said on camera about UFOs, he never said that he saw one on the way to the moon or saw something anomalous on the moon. He never would allude to anything anomalous on those missions. And I think probably either there's an NDA in place, a non-disclosure agreement the astronauts have to adhere to when they sign up to do these incredibly venturous explorations off the planet. If not, maybe there's some kind of hypnosis or threats. I don't know. But I know that he never actually spoke about that type of stuff. What he did talk about in terms of UFOs is that he knew there were programs within the government that were being actively carried out to research and look for UFOs. He was trying to make sure that the public knew about that type of stuff and that there were plenty of pilots and all kinds of civilian witnesses to UFOs around the world that were credible. So he propped up experiencers that were not him directly. I think that's because he knew something that obviously not everybody had access to. Edgar Mitchell conducted psychic experiments on the moon that involved remote viewing with friends here on planet Earth. What were those experiments? And by any chance, do you, Darcy, know the results of those experiments? He very secretly conducted these remote viewing exercises with his friends back on Earth. They made a plan. They scheduled an exact time. And what people don't understand, the moon missions and astronauts in general, especially back then, it was a perilous mission. It was dangerous. They constantly had to follow checklists. NASA wanted the astronauts to stay on task so that nothing could go wrong and there could be a loss of life or a loss of astronauts as they fly off into cislunar space. Edgar was very proficient. He was referred to as the brain by Houston Capcom employees. He was an engineer and just a brilliant mind. He was responsible for a lot of astronauts getting up before him and coming back, working at Capcom, communicating with them, working on trajectories and all the scientific mathematics stuff to get people to and from the moon. So he was Apollo 14 astronaut. And on the way to the moon, he finished all of his duties. On the way back, he was free to do what he wanted to do. The other astronauts had their duties. And that's when he practiced this remote viewing exercise in which his friends were going to open their mind to what he was thinking about at that exact date and time. Eventually, what happened was they could confirm Edgar thought of something at that time. He made note of it when he was inside of the capsule on the way back to the Earth. And his friends on Earth sketched out what he was thinking. This is traditional remote viewing practice. Apparently, they were 100% accurate with what his thoughts were, which this experiment led Edgar Mitchell to realize that we're innately psychic beings. He took the opportunity to open up the Noetics Institute as a result to practice and teach remote viewing and other consciousness mind science techniques would be explored with this institute. Astronauts on the moon recorded strange sounds they heard emanating from somewhere in space. A portion of that recording is played on secret space UFOs Apollo 1 to 11. Have those sounds been analyzed? If so, what were the results? Those sounds have been analyzed. That comes from NASA's database. During these missions, there was a flight recorder that is kind of like on a commercial flight, pedestrian flight, we have these things called a black box that records telemetry data.
data, voice, audio, and all kinds of computer, advanced computer reports about a plane these days. But back then it was audio from the astronauts talking and Capcom, if they were still in radio connection, as well as telemetry data and sensor data on the spaceship, the Apollo spacecraft. That audio would have come from when the astronauts were on the far side of the moon, outside of communication with Capcom Houston. You can hear the astronauts kind of playing with and responding to this eerie sound that they're hearing. And the interesting thing about that is that astronauts first started reporting hearing some strange sound during Apollo 8, which was the very first missions that we actually sent mankind to the moon. We landed during Apollo 11, but Apollo 8, 9, and 10, we went and orbited the moon and then came back to Earth just so we could observe what the lunar surface was like, see what was on the backside of the moon, take tons of pictures, tons of video, Mac DAC motion picture footage, as well as eyewitness accounts, notations, and so on and so forth. You can look at the transcripts that were later declassified, and these transcripts would have come from audio recordings of the astronauts remarking about what they saw and heard on the backside of the moon. This is recorded by that black box flight recorder, which NASA called the DSEA, Data Storage Equipment Recorder. That first transcript we show during Apollo 8 mentions this eerie noise. What's that sound? And then Apollo 10, they're really going after it and really talking and remarking about it. I think the astronauts just knew that that was something that they would hear or encounter on later missions. So they just didn't bother reporting on it later on. But it makes one to wonder, what is this noise emanating from? Is this coming from something that's located on the far side of the moon? Or is this coming from deep space beyond the moon? Does the moon operate as some kind of shield or filter to noise from deep space? I don't know. It was an eerie thing and a strange anomaly that we included in the documentary. I'm glad you did, but it was like incredible hearing that because it conjures up so many possibilities of what it could be. People trying to send signals to us from other galaxies or who knows what. So I'm glad you did it. Thank you for that. In the documentary, photos taken on the moon are shown and those Photos clearly show structures such as pyramids that are very similar. In fact, I'd say almost identical to those on our planet. Are there any theories floating around about how those structures came to be and who or what formed them? Well, there's all kinds of theories. People think that these structures could be remnants of an ancient alien civilization, or they could be remnants from a future version of us us that didn't survive some kind of cataclysm. And if there was some great reset, we're living out a new timeline after post-reset, and we've got this sort of amnesia towards the advanced culture we were before, where we actually were spacefaring and we had bases on the moon and we had maybe colonies on Mars, that type of thing. These are all theories. I can't substantiate or prove them to be factual, but anomalies like bases on the moon or structures structures that look like pyramids on Mars and the moon, that would make one want to believe that there's something out there in terms of greater intelligence or possibly an ancient intelligence. Should viewers of Paranormal Yakker want to view Secret Space, UFOs, Apollo 1 to 11, and learn about your other incredible documentaries, how can they do that? They can go to Amazon, iTunes, Apple TV, Google Play, Redbox. I'm on a bunch of different streaming platforms with the Siri. You can definitely check them out there. And Tubi TV is a platform where many of my films are free with some ads. So if they don't want to rent, they can go to Tubi TV, type in Darcy Weir, and they'll see my whole catalog of documentaries. Darcy Weir, I thank you for being my guest on Paranormal Yakker. It's been great yakking with you. Thank you. Thanks for the yak. Hi, everyone. This is Stan Mallow, the Paranormal Yacker. I hope you enjoyed the interview you just watched. To be sure you're amongst the first to receive new interviews when they're released and to have access to previous ones, subscribe to my free YouTube channel. To do that, all you have to do is press the subscribe button on your screen. Bye.